the moral of the story is, children, do not install beta versions on proper computers. We all know that, I know that, but I just chose to ignore it. Hi, welcome along to today's vlog. Today I want to talk about a place that I spend probably most of my week at, and you probably do the same thing, and that's my desk, my workstation as it were. And I've seen a few people talk about this on YouTube, and I found them quite interesting, learnt things, kind of thought, oh that's a good idea, might take that one, and so maybe this will prove useful for you if you're a musician yourself, or even if you're not a musician and you're just kind of looking around. The first thing to do is to actually talk about the desk unit itself. Now this desk unit is actually IKEA kitchen cupboards. So it's an IKEA kitchen unit across the top, which um, then has the two, um, base units. At times I've tried to use this as like an audio workstation, as my studio workstation and work elsewhere with my MacBook um, but the vast majority of the time now I do spend it at this desk. So here we've got my Kawaii ES100 digital piano. I wanted to actually put my Yamaha U1 talk about it more in this vlog, but I wanted to put it downstairs in the studio. Sadly, when we moved into the house, it wouldn't get in the basement. We tried getting it around the, uh, it just was never gonna go around the stairs downstairs. And there's a fire escape you've seen before. We tried lowering it, anyway, you can watch it in the vlog. It just wasn't gonna happen. So I had to get a digital piano. I was in, wanted to make sure I got one that had weighted keys. I didn't need a whole song and dance one with loads of different sounds and loads of different things. I just need something that I can work on. I can accompany students. I can explain things. I can kind of compose that. And so I got this. I still try, I don't use it anywhere near as much, but I still try and use my Yamaha U1 if I'm doing piano practice. My piano chops are nowhere near what they used to be uh, when I was working as a director of music because I don't need the piano every single week or every single day, which is a shame, um, but that's kind of what I start with. So that kind of sits there. Next up is my Samsung HD monitor. I got this monitor gosh, nearly nine, 10 years ago now, so I probably am due to upgrade it or change it, but it's a really useful thing to have. I tend to just keep my emails or Evernote or uh, other windows on. If I'm teaching over Skype, I use that monitor as my kind of teaching thing where I'll use the Wacom tablet to kind of work through things with people, kind of note things down, go through notation, use it like a blackboard kind of thing. This is a late 2015, 27 inch 5k retina display iMac it is my workhorse it really does it's got the 3.2 gigahertz processor in it tethered around the back of it is 15 terabytes of hard drives all daisy chained together into certain things when i first started vlogging i did kind of go through delete the unused footage since then i've tried to keep almost everything i've shot which means i've got to get a lot of hard drive space i recently bought another four terabyte hard drive there's another four terabytes around the back another couple of two terabyte drives i, I probably need at some point i'm going to need at some point to buy uh, a better unit that can handle more storage space because i need to be able to get a lot of storage space whoops off <laughs> off where it is right now and onto back backup drives and things like that. But for now, this setup works really, really well for me. I like to be able to access things quickly. And you know, if I think about, I wanna use a particular clip in a vlog, or if I need some footage for a lesson, it's great to know that I've got it somewhere on a hard drive. I can just quickly grab it, put it into that project. Off we go. The problem with the Thunderbolt is I'm using both Thunderbolts at the moment, one for the monitor, and also one for the Focusrite Claret 4, which is my digital audio workstation, which, I bought last year, it made a huge difference. I didn't make a vlog about it, very few people have viewed it, I guess it wasn't that interesting, um, but it makes a huge difference. I've got four inputs, XLR at the front, there are a load of inputs around the back, it's almost overkill for what I need in general daily use, but if I want to record things in the studio, and I've spoken about this, what I'd love to do with my Patreon page is to create a live lounge in here, in which case I'll need all the extra audio inputs for drum kit, bass, guitar, keyboard, those kind of things, but everything's plugged in through there, the MIDI and everything else like that. And this, it powers these KRK Rocket 5s, which I've had now for over 10 years since I first got my studio done in Northern Ireland. They have been brilliant. They're not the kind of sort of most expensive monitors, but they give a good flat sound, which is what you need when you're mixing. They're really, really, they've just been great workhorses. I've never had any problems with them. One of the best investments I've made, along with the stands, which are a great investment, because if you don't have the stands, a, they're at the wrong height, <coughs> and B, they're not kind of insulated because they have this nice insulation material, so I'd highly recommend. Now, one thing I picked up from MKHB, who is a tech reviewer on YouTube, is using the mouse and the trackpad, especially when I'm working in Final Cut Pro. So the idea is, with the trackpad, 
I can pinch and zoom and move around with the mouse I can kind of action things and then you've got the shortcuts on the keyboard it is really handy having kind of two hands working on the two devices I have found that I am I do prefer a mouse actually to a trackpad I didn't have a trackpad for a long time but it is handier with a mouse just being able to get around the screen faster especially when I'm editing video and audio I've also got a Wacom uh, tablet with a pen next to that I have my Ewe which I haven't really taken out since I did the Michael Brecker vlog um, but I really do need to get that practice more I thought leaving on my desk might encourage me to do a bit more practice sadly it hasn't and I really need to pull my finger out and get that practiced a bit more finally I've got these neon lights you've seen it in some of the vlogs it just adds a little bit of a spaceship kind of look you're not really going to see the benefit at this time of day actually let me just go and turn the lights off you know it just gives a nice little hue effect uh, behind the, uh, the desk wasn't particularly expensive about eight nine pounds off eBay so well worth getting it just goes around the sticky doesn't look that tidy so that's my little desk tour I hope you um find something useful out of that. I really need to get on with a bit of practice before I start teaching again. Still getting pain in this finger. I'm going to see a specialist on Friday in London about it because it's really, it shouldn't, it's getting worse. It used to be kind of like at the end of a gig, it would be really sore. Now it's sore even when I start practicing like then and it fits just kind of in this section of the finger, just kind of where the G finger rests on the key. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a bad idea if you're busy waiting for something else to happen, you're grabbing 10 minutes of practice just to pick a particular scale. Now, I was asked a question, I can't remember who it's by, about harmonic minor scales and things like that. I will answer that in a, a more uh, specific uh, vlog Q&A, but essentially, I will, today I'm just picking harmonic minor scales, I'm just picking a D harmonic minor because I was teaching somebody on it yesterday on Mr. PC for Coltrane, we're running loads of ideas, and I just realised there was some of them I'm just really rusty at. <laughs> So I fixed the camera mount back in. It looks like something out of Top Gear, but we'll see. So basically the iMac, the reinstall didn't work. So I've had to just basically go back. I don't know, I followed all the instructions I was supposed to, but never mind, these things happen. So now I'm just doing a restore from time capsule from what I had before, which is gonna take seven and a half hours which means thankfully I've got a MacBook Pro, which means I can get the vlog out tonight and still do my work tonight, but it's really frustrating. So the moral of the story is children, do not install beta versions of proper computers. We all know that, I know that, but I just chose to ignore it. before about where I am now, Duxford IWM. They've just given us an offer, because we're neighbours, we get in here free. But now we get a very special offer on membership, which means we can get in with this card to the Church of War Rooms, which is in the Dark Star film, which I'm hoping to watch soon, and I will vlog about, and HMS Belfast, which I'll probably vlog about as well. Good things to do with the kids, etc, etc. So, yeah, thank you, Duxford. <laughs> Don't tip it any further way around. But why did Karl Marx only drink herbal tea? Because property is theft. Just time for a really quick Q&A today. I'm gonna to answer some more in-depth questions another time. I'm gonna just turn my um, 
watch off. Uh, Darren Hill asked me a question yesterday. So, what's your opinion on damp, mild bleach swabs for the horn and dunking my crook reed and mouthpiece in mild bleach water briefly? Darren, I'm not a doctor. I wouldn't do it because I don't want any bleach to come in contact with stuff I've constantly got in my mouth. I use antibacterial wipes and then I wash the mouthpiece out afterwards just using soap and water, just using normal dishwasher, not dishwasher, you know what I mean, fairy liquid, that kind of thing. Other brands are available. Uh, Stephen Howard talks about, and I use it in, in this vlog episode, about cleaning the neck out with vinegar, which leads me on to um, another question was, is it okay to what, use white wine vinegar, sorry, white vinegar instead of malt vinegar? Um, I guess white vinegar is even better because then it won't taste like a fish and chip shop. Uh, white wine vinegar won't be good, but white vinegar I'm sure will be absolutely fine. Uh, and Jared asked me, he says, hi Dan, do you make your own background music you put in every other blog's opening and when you're driving? Yes, all that music is my own unless otherwise stated. I might use other people's music if they're going to be in the vlog. So my coffee with Rachel Johnson, coffee with Dan obviously, but with Rachel, uh, that features some of Rachel's music. The one with Sarah Ellen Hughes features Sarah's music. But on the whole, it's my own music. I will use it to showcase the music which you can buy below at music.damforshow.com or I will use music I've written um, specifically for the vlog, often just using things in Apple loops or other loops I've come across. I'll just knock something out in the studio. I haven't done a lot of that. I want to have time to put that together, but I've been composing a lot more stuff for the band recently. So this is what I was up to in my last vlog here. This is what I was up to this time last year, but most importantly, please hit that subscribe button. I've got something to tell you about the Santa Play Sax video in my next vlog episode, so stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.